Hello everyone, welcome to Tech Hub Dots. Today I am going to discuss fan out, fan in pattern, which is one of the durable function patterns. Okay, so let's move ahead without wasting time. So all the green section I have already covered in my previous videos. Today I will discuss fan out and fan in, and all the upcoming topics I will discuss in my upcoming videos. Okay. So there are some uh, prerequisites that I request you to see this before moving ahead and I strongly suggest you to watch the previous sessions which are based on Azure functions and Azure durable function that will really help you to understand this session as well. Okay, so let's move ahead. So as you can see this picture which depicts fan out and fan in pattern. So let's go by definition first. In fan out fan in pattern, you execute multiple functions in parallel or concurrently wait for all the functions to finish. As you can see, this is the first function f1 which sends or which is calling multiple times to the function f2 and then after integrating all the output of f2 function instances, we are integrating and then passing it as a single output to function f3. Okay, some aggregation work is done on the result that are returned from the function. Okay, so we are talking about this. All three function instances will be computed, then aggregation will perform and we are passing next. With normal functions, you can fan out by having the function send multiple messages to a queue. So the operation we are calling this function instance multiple time, it is fan out activity. Okay, the fan out works in a distributed to multiple instances of the F2 function. The work is tracked by the dynamic list of tasks. Don't worry, I will discuss all these things. Function back in is much more challenging. So function in or fan in means we are talking about integrating all the outputs of F2 function instances. To fan in, in normal function you write code to track when the queue triggered function end and then store function output so we are considering it is some kind of queue which is sending or which is calling multiple instance of f2 or you can normally um, you know consider just like for each loop in that we are calling this f2 function instance again and again okay so task dot when all so this is very important task dot when all is called to wait for all the called functions to finish. So once we finish all these three functions, then the F2 function outputs the aggregated from the dynamic task list and passed to the F3 function. Okay, so all three will be processed, aggregated and then passed to F3. So it is one of the simplest pattern of dribble functions. Okay, so let's move ahead. As you can see, I'm going to discuss this function and what is happening here. We have one function. Again, we will create a durable function. Don't worry, I will show you in a practical manner how you can create a durable function. And then we have to modify our piece of code like this. We will create a function, fan out, fan in. Then from there, we will use the context object as we have used in my previous sessions as well to call any activity function to perform some activity. So here we are calling F1, which will return the work batch. Maybe number of objects will be returned by this, maybe five that I gonna use in that way only. Okay, and then we loop through till the length of work bench and every time we are calling the function F2. F2 is nothing which is just returning any integer type value. Okay, and it's up to you what kind of operation that you want to perform. And then at the end, once all these activities, all these parallel tasks added to this parallel task, which is again list, then we are saying task dot when all. Okay, it means at this time we are activating the functions to compute the value. Then in the next step, we are calculating the parallel dot sum where we are, you know, summing of all the result value of all the calling of f2 function and that will come into this sum integer variable and then again we are passing this sum value to the function 3 okay very simple so the variable function extension handles this pattern especially with relatively simple code the automatic checkpoint that happens at the await call on the task dot when all Okay, this is task dot when all ensure that a potential midway crash or reboot 
doesn't require to restart an already completed task okay it means the task which are already completed if there is any crash or reboot happens those will not be computed again okay and there is one very important note the await task when all okay which is in line all the individual calls to f2 functions okay here you can see we are calling context dot call activity async in my previous pattern which was of chaining pattern in that we were using await here but here we are not calling await it means we are running all this function calling concurrently or you can say parallelly okay so all the individual calls to f2 function were not awaited which allow them to run in parallel when we pass this array of tasks to the task dot when all we get back a task that wouldn't complete until all the operations have completed okay so it will wait for all the actions all the panel tasks to complete okay i hope it is pretty simple and i will show you all these things in action so let's jump into the visual studio to see all these things Here I am using the same ASP.NET Core solution and earlier I have discussed the HTTP trigger, I have already discussed chaining pattern and today we are discussing fan in fan out pattern. Okay, so what changes we made after creating by default? Okay, we are giving fan out fan in pattern, this is the name and this is the piece of code that I have added. Okay, so again the same thing I am not going to repeat again so this is where we are calling the first activity function f1 okay it is nothing but what, what it is returning it is returning the new object of five count it means it will return five object okay so after completing this activity all the five object will be saved in this workbench object variable okay and then we are looping through it will loop through five times because, it, because we are returning five instances and five times we are calling f2 which is f2 what we are doing f2 in f2 we are just saying hello to the number okay and then we are returning the integer value okay see we are return type is integer again we are saving this calculated activity result in this task and we are adding this task into this parallel task again so five times this thing happened and till this point it is not computed okay let me put a breakpoint here i will show you at runtime what is the status of it and after that we are doing this calculating sum here and then passing to the f3 what we are doing in f3 in f3 function we are receiving the integer total sum and we are just simply returning a string value total count the sum okay ultimately in enterprise level or in practical life you will perform some processing that you want to do and i mean in this f1 and in this f2 is activity trigger as well okay but for the demo purpose i keep it very simple but you can use it in any manner i strongly suggest you to take this piece of code from a repo the link will be given in the description of this video and do as many as changes you want to do and perform the operations and see how it's working okay so all the changes are done let me run the solution to see how it's working after running the solution you can see this console window always opens and what it is saying there is one http trigger available and there are one orchestration trigger chaining pattern another one is orchestration trigger because i have already uh, you know it is already there in my solution and we have four activity functions f1 f2 f3 and the activity trigger this was the previous one okay and just one more important thing to call this activity to call this not activity to call this orchestration trigger i am using the again http trigger okay to call this so as simply if i you recall my previous session i have just provided my orchestration trigger function name and that's it and we are calling create check status of the response okay and it will call my orchestration trigger simple as that and then orchestration work orchestration will call all the activity functions now copy this url and paste it into the browser and see what is the output i paste that url into the browser and i can see this result but my visual studio solution is in debugging mode because i paste the breakpoint here so as you can see here you can see these are the parallel tasks which are nothing but the collection of my activities that gonna perform as you can see all these five activities are waiting for activation okay and 
this end result is not computed yet it is not yet computed okay and if i press f5 then all the result will be computed again and again let me remove it and we will see later at the end the computed value so you can see in this console window it is saying everything is computed perfectly okay there is no issue at all and at the end it is showing sum of all is 5 which is our expected value and let me show you on the browser as well you can see in this browser we receive this first url which is nothing but the state query get uri okay i will paste it into the new window and hit enter so you will see the name fan it fan out pattern this is id this is status complete there is no input there is no custom status and the output is total count five okay so which is our expected solution so let's go back to the presentation now you have already seen how fan out and fan in pattern works okay but there are a few important points that i would like to discuss with you in rare circumstances it is possible that a crash could happen in the window after an activity functions completes but before its completion is saved into orchestration history okay only in that case if it happens the activity function would rerun from the beginning after the process recovery okay this is important point to remember and what there are few things about helper activity functions the helper activity functions are just regular functions that use activity trigger binding okay that we have already seen this thing in my previous session as well there might be one question in your mind you might be wondering why you couldn't just put this piece of code directly into the orchestration function you could but this would break one of the fundamental rule of orchestration function what is that which is that they should never do input output operations including local file operation or system access or that kind of thing but as you can see in this example i haven't used any input output but i keep it as simple as possible so it is easy for you all to understand in a very easy manner but yes in practical scenario when there is situation like input output operation or including local system access so it is not preferred to put directly into the orchestration function okay and one more important point the http request trigger that i am using for the fan out fan in orchestration and pass the string function name as a parameter okay just to call it i have already shown you the response provided a link to a get the status of the operation that at the end i have already shown you in the browser so durable function extension ensure that the end-to-end -end execution is resilient to process recycling okay you can consider because when you are performing a bigger operation that can take much time and every activity completion is required in that case this pattern is very helpful okay so i hope you like this video if you have any question any suggestion you can drop me a comment and i will apply on that as soon as possible and i strongly encourage you to provide your feedback because that sound inspiration for me to create such videos and don't forget to subscribe i will see you in the next video till then bye bye